Rhinoceros by Eugene Ionesco is a play set in a small French village where a bizarre crisis is unfolding, people are mysteriously turning into rhinoceroses. The transformation starts with a small bump on the forehead, followed by the skin turning green and becoming tougher, and the voice becoming inarticulate trumpeting. Eventually, a horn emerges, and the transformation is complete. While most of the townspeople succumb to this strange epidemic and join the rhino herd, the central character, Beringer, remains unaffected. Beringer's journey in the play is one of personal transformation. At first, he is a man who finds his life meaningless and is apathetic about his job and existence. He blames his lethargy on the monotony of his daily routine. However, as the rhinoceros epidemic unfolds, he becomes a symbol of resistance against thoughtless conformity, embracing personal responsibility, individuality, and morality. Acti is set in the town square on a midday when the church bells have just stopped ringing. Two men, Jean and Beringer, meet at a cafe and engage in a conversation about Beringer's negligence and apathy. They hear the distant sound of trumpeting rhinoceroses, but only Beringer remains unaffected. He orders another drink, while Jean tries to discuss the significance of the event. Beringer reluctantly agrees with Jean's view that the rhinos should not be allowed to roam freely. Daisy, a typist from Beringer's office, joins them, and Beringer becomes self-conscious about his appearance. Despite his pessimism about life and his own existence, Jean encourages Beringer to embrace culture and the arts to improve his intellect. The logician and an old gentleman also sit nearby, engaging in discussions about logical thinking methods, providing a surreal backdrop to the unfolding events. A rhinoceros suddenly races through the square, trampling a woman's cat, causing outrage among the townspeople. Beringer and Jean argue about the significance of distinguishing between different types of rhinoceroses, and Jean leaves in frustration, while Beringer remains indifferent. Act 2 takes place in Beringer's office, where a debate about the rhinoceros incident is underway. Botard, a skeptic, dismisses the incident as a collective illusion, while Mrs. Burf claims her husband has transformed into a rhinoceros. When the rhinoceros smashes the office's staircase, Mrs. Burf jumps onto its back and is carried away. Meanwhile, Beringer and Jean reconcile, but Jean starts exhibiting signs of transformation into a rhinoceros and becomes hostile, eventually turning into one. In the final act, Beringer wakes up from a nightmare about turning into a rhinoceros. He discusses the epidemic with Dittard and contemplates the guilt he feels for Jean's transformation. Dittard theorizes that some people are predisposed to transform due to character flaws. Beringer fears succumbing to the epidemic himself, but is encouraged by the idea that alcohol might provide immunity. However, he witnesses the transformation of more people, including his office manager, and his resolve to resist grows stronger. As the play concludes, Beringer is left alone, vowing to resist conformity while the world outside becomes consumed by the rhinoceros epidemic. The play is a prime example of the theater of the absurd, exploring themes of meaninglessness, conformity, and the loss of individuality in a surreal and absurd world. It received critical acclaim and a Tony Award in 1961. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.